Jay Haynes for the Film Sensei YouTube channel. Today in this video, we're going to create this light trail effect in HitFilm Express. So this effect would be very, very easy if you had the particle simulator that is found in HitFilm Pro, or if you had the add-on pack with the particle simulator in it. If you don't have the particle simulator, you can still fake this, but you have to jump through a few hoops to be able to do it. We're going to start with some raw footage and notice that I have it on a green screen. This is very important because it makes your life a lot easier. If you don't have it on a green screen, then you have to do a lot of masking and that could be a real pain. So it's just a lot easier if you can key it out. I'm going to right click on that and make it into its own composite shot. And I'm going to refer to this as the green screen footage. Okay. Clicking OK. I will open this up and adjusting the transform properties, I will rotate it 90 degrees and move it into position. From here, I wanna go ahead and create a garbage mat using the masking tool to essentially remove anything that is outside of the, the um, green screen itself. Then I will use a green screen key to key out the footage. If I open up the color difference key and look, you'll see that there is a little bit of a problem here, but making some quick adjustments, you can fairly quickly uh, take care of that. And now you can see that it looks pretty good. So this is my keyed out footage. What I want to do now is create a new composite shot and I will call this the final shot. And I will go ahead and drag in my green screen footage. Now, what I want to do is I want to have that light circle circle around it uh, in front of and behind and in front of and behind. So we're going to start by setting up how it's going to circle. So I'm going to go ahead and create the mat first. Creating a new composite shot, I will call this the mat. Clicking OK. And I will bring in my green screen footage. Clicking on the dimension icon, I want to make this into a three-dimensional plane. It will automatically add a camera, and if it doesn't, it will ask you if you want to add a camera, and the answer to that will be yes. Looking at this from a perspective mode, you can see that essentially I just am looking at myself here in this, in this shot. What I want to do is make a new point and make it three dimensional. Starting here at the beginning, I will go ahead and open up the transform properties and just slide it down below. Keyframe the position, move to the end of the timeline and then move it above. At the same time, I want it to rotate as it moves. So I will keyframe the rotation of the Y axis. And then at the end of the time frame, I can make it two or three times so that it is just circling around. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and rename that point to center. And it's the center pivot point, making a new point and making it 3D. I will call this the edge. This is where the edge of the light sword effect will happen. I will open up that. And let me just parent that to the center point and then reset the position point temporarily. And now what I will do is I will just slide this out from the center point so that it is circling literally around me this way. Okay. So now if I go back into my active camera mode, I can see how that edge point is circling around the three dimensional uh, plane of, of my, uh, of my keyed out footage. I'm going to go ahead and add the missile smoke effect. This is sort of the secret sauce of this. I'll bring this in. This is the free version of this, of course. And you can see it's sitting here in the uh, center. What I want to do is open up the properties. And under general, I would like to attach that to the edge point. So now it is circling around. Now notice that it still looks like it's in front of me every, every time. That's because it is set as a two dimensional layer, but if I make it 3D unrolled, then it will appear that it is moving behind and in front of me. 
And even in the perspective view, it will appear that way because it is genuinely three-dimensional now. What I want to do under the smoke properties is make some adjustments, starting with upping the density to the maximum, taking the linger up to the maximum, and the linger variation down to zero, the size variation down to zero, the speed down to zero, and then I can just make some adjustments to the size. And as long as it doesn't cross itself front to back, then I will be good. So this looks fairly good. I think I can, if I want, add a threshold effect just to solidify that a little bit more. I would do that by adding a grade layer and then applying the threshold effect onto that. The threshold effect is an effect that basically makes everything either one color or the other. Okay. One of the things I want to do is, is I want my footage to not be um, any color except black. So if I add a fill color effect to my footage and then I just make that fill color black, then basically I will have this white smoke, which has been solidified by the threshold effect in front of and behind this black. And I can make some adjustments here to this threshold effect to really get it to solidify. And I'm feeling pretty good about that. And now all I need to do is make this me, the black part of me, uh, into transparent as well. So I can add yet another grade layer and then add a demult key over the top of that, essentially removing the black um, green screen footage there. Now that I've done that, I can go back into my final shot and I can drag the mat in and I can go ahead and hide that. Creating a new plane layer in here, I will add the light sword two point auto effect. If I right click on the plane, I can change the blend mode to either add or screen. It doesn't really matter. I will need the data from the mat regarding the edge and center points as well as the camera. So I'm just going to grab those three items, copy them, and bring them back into the final. Uh, and paste them here. Okay. And then the two-point auto effect, I can go ahead under the hilt position, assign it to that edge, and under the tip position, assign it to that edge, and zero that out. Now you'll see that that is circling around where the edge is. If I go ahead and open up the auto scale persistence, I can uncheck the auto scale, and then under the motion persistence, if I crank that way up, then I will get my nice light sword circle effect. I'm not fond of the glow part of this, so I'm just going to remove it by taking the width down to zero. And I would, I'm would i just going to change the core. It can be any color I want. I'm going to make it white. Okay, but now what I need to do is add the matte effect to the layer so that I remove when it goes behind. Searching for the set matte effect, I will drop that onto the plane layer and I will go ahead and source the matte. And now you can see that it is removing the parts that should be removed, but leaving the parts that should be left. Okay. Um, a couple of minor things. That's basically the whole thing, but I can do a couple of other minor things. One is, is I'm not fond of the fact that that is sort of flickering there. I don't like that. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, the core effect stability, if you up that to 100, then it will no longer have that flicker effect. Okay. Also, if I want to add some color into this, I might add either a glow effect or a neon glow effect, or I could add both. Starting by adding the glow effect, I'm going to adjust the per channel intensity to make everything red. And then I will just sort of bring that up a little bit. Maybe take this down, adjust the radius, something like that. Let's add in a neon glow effect. And I think I will make this more of a lighter, of a purplish color. And we'll take that down. 
Let me uh, take the expansion down. This is sort of the secondary effect of it. And up the radius. And now I have this lovely looking uh, light trail that's swirling around me. If I, uh, under options, go ahead and tick on checkerboard background, you can see that that is transparent, which means anything that I put behind here, a background of whatever type, it will be here and it will look very, very lovely. So basically, that is the light trail effect swirling around somebody in a nutshell. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And I would appreciate it if you would uh, like this video and subscribe to the channel. Click that little bell for notifications. Otherwise, thanks for watching.